What's going on everybody and welcome back and to the channel. Now today we are back here with another Discord Cricket Memes episode here on this Monday. So firstly, happy Monday. Welcome to the new week. Did I think that I would be sitting here covering some memes and some cricket when both Australia and India have lost test matches there? Let's be honest, we probably thought they were going to win. So this should be a bit of a fun and just a bit of a sadder sort of episode. But hey, if you are new around here, hit that subscribe button, leave a like and comment down below all of your emotions from this recent cricketing events. I'm, I'm sure some people were, you know, super happy to see what the West Indies did to Australia. And then a few hours later, it was carnage in the other match. So look, test cricket is well and truly alive. And this is where cricket is at its very, very peak. But hey, I've got my setup back. I've got my laptop back. Unfortunately, I couldn't record any videos for the last, what's it been? So one, two, three. So it's been four days since I've actually been able to sit here and record a video. I recorded a few um, like in prepare because I knew that I was going to have to, uh, like this is a laptop that is like a spare uh, laptop from, from my mum. And essentially I had to give it back to her so she could give it to someone to like do all the updates and repairs and all that just general sort of stuff. So I'm here now, I'm back, it's Monday. I wanted to make sure I had my laptop by the start of the week. So apologies, no daily reviews, but it probably looks like it might've been a good choice in the end. All right, all of that out of the way, let's get straight into it. Okay, Ash wins bunny. So we've gone up a little bit in the memes discord. Of course, it'll it'll filter through once we get more to the end. Ashwin, most dismissed batters. Ben Stokes, 12 times. Oh, God. David Warner, 11. Thank God that won't happen anymore. Alastair Cook and then Steve Smudger. Look at all, look at that man, Alastair Cook. He looks so comfy. Uh, most 50 plus scores by an Indian in India since 2018. So yeah, I mean, the, he does it with both, doesn't he? 20 innings, 877 runs, two tons, 650s. Pretty solid average. Look at that man, Rishab, just below him though. One, I mean, look at Rohit Sharma down the bottom though. Five centuries, that's pretty solid actually. An average of 57. Pajara, just 31, and then Rahane, 39. So it's probably a little bit disappointing on home soil, isn't it? To only average 31, um, for Pajara, that is. Sir Jadu, Yuvraj Singh needed six balls to smack six sixes, but I only needed two balls to smash you six times. <laughs> Get your hand off it, Jadu. What's he looking for? I hope he's fixing uh, the box, maybe. Who knows? What a pose. Uh, okay, so no, look, this was one of the better moments um, in Test cricket, at least this year. You know, when when that you know man Johnny Bairstow, he wants to leave it, and it just fucking crashes straight through his off peg. That's that that's what I'm talking about. A home track bully, <laughs> Johnny against India in England, and then Johnny against India in India. And I want to say that goes for almost every single place. If he's not playing on home soil. He's, he's a worry. Um, yeah, I mean, I would have thought so. I don't think his average in, in Australia would be that good either, but maybe I'm just talking out my ass. Who knows? Root the bowler in India. Overseas bowlers bowling average in test matches in India. Joe Root, 23. Graham Swan, 28. Nathan Lyon, 27. And then Monty Panesar, 38. Those are some of the better names that have ever, like, bowled the ball of spin in India of recent times. And then you got Joe Root, the man, Alan DeGeneres, just randomly 23. He actually is such a quality bowler. I don't know why he's never like bowled himself more uh, against India. If I fail to score runs with the bat, I take wickets. If I fail to take wickets with ball, I score a century. <laughs> I mean, shit. It's probably a good thing he didn't actually score a century. Otherwise, it, it would have been over. Uh, we need Lord. Yes. I'm not going to... This could be the play. You know, you're seeing guys like Shireya Ayer, Shukman Gill, even Jot... Well, not Jaiswal, but Gill, uh, Ayer in that middle order. You know, KS Barat. I know that he's a wicketkeeper, but maybe you can just give KL the gloves and then you can bring in an extra batsman. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the guy to say it that... Rinku could be the savior. He'll bring nothing but energy, nothing but just great vibes to the team. And 
I think Rohit Sharma could then just bring him in as vice captain. Or because then Coley's going to be back in the third test match. So it probably works out. Has has to be in the top three greatest knock by a visiting batsman. Yeah. Hey, look, you guys know I'm not I'm not England's biggest enjoyer, but Ollie Pope. Take a bow. <laughs> Take a bloody bow, man. 196. Probably deserved the double ton there in the end. But 21 fours. He played this great innings against all of those India class bowlers on home soil. And they were done. They were absolutely cooked in the mud. The game was over. They were ready to go on the town and go for a big night on, uh, on day three. And then Oli Pope does something just... You just don't see it. Like, not even just in, like test match cricket for that matter when you're on the ropes that much ridiculous and it's easily the best knock of 2024 so far unless I'm forgetting a knock but gee whiz it's got to be up there doesn't it if the pitches in India uh, spin from ball one we won't complain fact and that's the sort of mentality he had to go in with instead of you know when teams get to England they're always like complaining about oh the pitches are going to do this we're ready for the pitches to do this and this it's like you can't do anything but just play and the man makes a big almost double time those scoop reverse sweeps god damn I know like this shot is ridiculous to just smack it straight over the top of your head vertically England's batters under Baza yeah Bazball Bazball um Oh, look, I mean, look, I wanted to be sitting here on a Monday talking about England being absolutely decimated, embarrassed, destroyed. So, look, this is a little bit, a little bit, a uh, little bit, what's what's the word I'm looking for? It's a Monday. I'm having struggling speaking. Um, yeah, it's, it's not as funny when England's won. That's probably the best way to put it. Blood overtook his past in one inning, series of 2020 slash 21. Eight innings, 153, an average of 19, best of 34. This series, two innings, 190, average of 190, a century, and a 189, not out. So, look, not bad. You take that. And it's got it's just one of the better knocks that we've seen in Indian conditions in the last, like, decade, I want to almost say. That may be a stretch, but, like, the last five years, like... I know Steve Smith in, in 2016 or 17 had a really big century that was, you know, up against the, the odds. Um, I know there was a Sri Lankan player who I think had a really big score in India too. I'm just trying to remember. Uh, Basball succeeded. Look, again, I'm, I, I just didn't, I didn't see this happening. And I don't feel overly great by it. I'm here to prove we can dominate without playing Basball. It was. It was actually a really good test innings. Hey, yo, Elise Perry? What is she doing? You're meant to be playing South Africa in Australia right now, Pez. Anyways, that's all good. She's dyed her hair just so she could quickly get over to the test match, see England wearing an Indian shirt. Okay, Elise, we'll talk about that later. Control. Maddie. Okay. Oh, so is this her? It's not actually Elise Perry, right? I was, you know, tricked. Joyce will literally won in life. Oh, hold on. Is there, is there, what's going on? Is this new relationship status for the man? Is this why he's distracted? Is this why you're not making double centuries? No, I'm joking. Nah, good on him. If that's, uh, happens to be the case, where is she from? Is she from Australia, England? If she's from England, then we know why they lost. But if she's from Australia, then well, that's okay. We'll, we'll allow that. Why England again? England will host, yeah, the 2025 and 2027 World Test Championship Finals. And I don't really get it because, like, I know they have ideally some of the better conditions, like pitch-wise, you know, batting, bowling, they have it all. But so does Australia, so does a bit of New Zealand. Even South Africa can produce a pretty good wicket at times. Um, I guess, like, almost any country can produce a good wicket if they get told to and they prepare. But, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing. I think it just should be in a neutral country each year, and they should just decide it, like, in that same year. Like, it can't be that hard to schedule a game, right? Or maybe it is. <laughs> Rowett said this after WTC. 
Uh, earlier, after India suffered their second defeat in the final, Captain Rowett has said that future finals should be played out of England and not necessarily be scheduled for June. Why after the IPL final? Why can't it happen in March? I do remember him saying that actually, and it was pretty funny um, because it was. It was a really jam-packed schedule that sort of time, and it made all the players who were coming from the IPL, which was every single player in the Indian team, I think except for like Pajara and Rahane maybe. Oh no, Rahane played for CSK. And then Australia was like a little bit of the team, but not most of it. So slight, I mean slight, you know, advantage at that point, but Suchin and Coley meeting with public. Is this the look alike to you? Oh, why is there so much security? Why is there so much security? They're just the lookalikes. Do people not know? <laughs> Hold on. Bro, they're actually getting moved around like they are Virat Kohli and Sachin Tendulkar. What is with the security? Yo, are they that famous in India as well? The lookalikes? <laughs> oh, that's Suchin fella. I love that guy. That Sachin lookalike, bro. He is, uh, he's funny. Uh... <laughs> Travis Head in the test series against the Windies. First test in Adelaide. Nice. And then when, when he thinks that it, it doesn't mean anything, back-to-back -back ducks. So. He doesn't play very well in Brisbane. I don't know what it is, but if, if the match doesn't mean anything, he literally doesn't give a fuck. If it means something really big, he'll actually play well. Uh, tell him it's an ICC final and that's who against India, and then we'll see how he scores. How Indian fans are feeling. Damn it. He's like, bruh, really? You, you do this only against, you know, the West Indies, but in the WTC final, the World Cup final, you had to do it against us. A very average series. Yeah. Um, before I, let's discuss Mana. So I'll just have a sip of my coffee before it goes cold. Um, I'll edit all of that out. You won't see that. Um... And now I've got it all over my fucking mustache. Manus Lavashane's batting average in home test summers. It's been incredible until this season. Um, well, actually, not his first. First year was pretty average. But other than that, it's been pretty bloody good. Just a, a 28 average. And he was fucking shit. Like, as an Aussie, I'm a big Manus fan, but I'm going to say it how it is. Like, he was terrible. He had one decent test match. I think it was at Adelaide um, where he made back-to-back -back 60s, I think it was. But even then, he wasn't fluent with his runs. He really had to work so bloody hard for every single run. And is that credit to the Windies bowling lineup or is that just... Well, even he, he didn't play that well against Pakistan either. So, you know... Do we need a new number three or number four? Moses on Reeks is in prime touch. Um, who else is there? Ah, Matt Short, if you had to be risky. Aaron, Web uh, Aaron Webster. Aaron Hardy. Uh, Nathan McSweeney. Bo Webster. There is some names who are bouncing around. Ban Bancroft, if he wants to try about at three, I suppose. Uh, historical day for South Africa. They have beaten Australia for the first ever time in international cricket. Is that true? Have they not beaten us until that game? Okay, wow. I knew this series was going on. I watched the uh, the first game and then I missed that second match. But wow, so they ended up winning pretty well in the end. Okay, well done to them. Their first W over the Aussies. I thought they would have easily beaten us at least once. Uh, the golden fab four of the Aussie bowling. Yeah. If only it uh, was able to get the West Indies players out uh, in quicker, quicker time, but that's okay. Uh, yep. Anyways, they bowled okay. Just didn't bowl us enough for a win. But you know what? They do it every other game. They're allowed to have one mishap. And you know what? I'm happy for the West Indies at least. It's better than it being England or even New Zealand would have been a tough one to take. <laughs> is Cummins the best test bowler in the world right now? Aussie bias aside, who is the best test bowler in the world? E uh, SEN's Cricket. So this is an Australian radio, um, popular radio in Australia. So this is probably why. Pat Cummins, 65%. Good Lord. Boomer, Rabada, Lyon, and Mitchell Stark. So I think they're around the mark. I think these two are probably a bit closer. But And then Rabada. Like, I mean, this is just because Australians would have voted on it. But 
yeah, I'd, I'd probably have, yeah, Cummins, Boomra, Rabada in that top three, not really separating them. Um, yeah. Maybe I should do like power ranking videos one day, just release my own random power rankings or something. Uh, wait, what have we witnessed? Bro, yeah, no, nah, I love this. I don't even care. Like, you look, Steve, I do care. I wanted us to win. I wanted Smith to get 100, but this is just as cool, man. Like, this is so damn awesome uh, for Sharma Joseph to literally be, we thought he was going to get carted to the bloody stadium in a wheelchair and then he pops up 10 minutes before the game, does some warm-ups, bowls, takes seven for, wins him the match. And he, uh, yeah, man, he's going to be a fucking superstar. I mean, if he's not already, like, I think everyone knows this guy already, right? But, yeah, ridiculous scenes. And the celebration, I mean, I thought the guy had a broken toe and then he was doing a lap of honor. He fucking sprinted to the boundary. And I'm like, hold on, that toe's not broken. <laughs> hold on, he lied to us. <laughs> no. With a broken and injured toe, he bowled his heart out, bro. I mean... Yeah, in incredible, like, and then to see the guys of, you know, Carl Hooper, Brian Lara, um, there was a few other West Indies legends amongst it, but that's as special as it gets, like, to do it in Australia at the Gabba that's been known as this, you know, fortress, let's say, until India, of course, beat us, but now the West Indies, so... Not a fortress anymore, I would say. I don't want it to be called that. What an inspiring journey it's been. Until 2018, he lived in a place where there was no internet. That's pretty common. Uh, due to lack of money, he used to used to practice with lemons, limes, and guavas. Worked as a security guard, got a big blow on his toe yesterday, and then won 50 kilometers for seven wickets in 11 overs. Hmm. His story, like they, they spoke about his story a fair bit on Channel 7 and they had this little like documentary thing of, of a few of the West Indies players and going back to their, their homes and their, you know, where they grew up. And it's like, man, you can just see the humble beginnings and, and like how much work they've put in to be where they are. It's, yeah, incredible. Uh, we got Adam Gilchrist hugged and congratulated. B. Lara. Yeah, no. Nah. Hey, and this is awesome, bro. Like, I think even Gilly, like, not one Australian was angry yesterday with this loss. I don't think any Aussie was, like, upset or, or really gutted. You know, it's like, do we want to win? Yes, because we're arrogant Australians. But, you know, the West Indies, man, this is good for them. They've been some of the, you know, they've given us some of the greatest cricket in the past. So, to just see them get a nice little victory now... Um, see the, the greats enjoy it. That's what I'm talking about. And hopefully they can take this into England. I, I believe they actually go and tour England in a test series in a, in a month or so now. So hopefully they take that form and can beat England maybe. <laughs> uh, Aussie's pink ball dominance is over. WWW, WW, win, 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 and a loss. So that's disappointing. But hey, Sharma Joseph, take a bow, son. <clears throat> Even Kima, Roach, uh, Sinclair, they all bowled really, really well. Even late runs, you know, there was just so many crucial moments. 13 wickets and player of the series in his test debut. And he was incredible in that Adelaide test. Also made some runs and then just, just was awesome with the ball as well. 13 wickets. <laughs> Hat off. Seriously, hats off. Like, uh, there's nothing more that can be said. He deserves to... I don't know if he's into, you know, drinking beer, but I hope he had a big night out on, on the Brisbane town last night and found himself into many beverages and uh, whatever else kept him going last night. If he still hasn't, he's probably not gone to sleep yet. Um, he's probably still up, you know, celebrating. I don't blame him. Lone Warrior Smudger kept fighting. Yeah, Steve. So, yeah, look, he, yeah, I know. It's a bit disappointing. Like, I did. I felt for Stevie. Because everyone, you know, has crapped on him and crapped on him and crapped on him since moving. And it's mostly Australians. Like, all I see from Aussie fans is just everyone saying, Ugh, I don't want Steve opening. He should have never moved up. It, you know, we're, we're not being traditional. It's like, bruh, this is Steve Smith. The man used to bat at nine and then he moved to like six and then five and then four. If there's anyone who knows how to move positions and still make runs... It's this man. Um, and he bat he batted really, really well. Was the only one who really stood up. Like, I've seen some people saying that he was playing too slow. But if he didn't, 
then we would have lost by like 70 more runs. So <laughs> like, it, yeah, I don't know. Like it's still test cricket at the end of the day. You still have to block the fucking ball. You still have to leave it and build into an innings. Um, you know, just a bit of crease control, right? The first big mistake. Yeah, I don't know. Like I'm looking back at this moment and I'm still thinking, I think it was the right call just because we knew that we were going to get you know, seven to eight overs at the West Indies before the day finished. And we ended up taking a wicket. But yeah, look, if they remained out there, soaked up some more time, some more, you know, 30 more runs, it possibly is a different result, isn't it? So, yeah, actually thinking about it, you might be right. But yeah, at the time, it did feel kind of right. I, I At the time, I was a little bit shocked. And then I'm like, all right, we've got about 10 overs before the day finishes. Get a wicket or two if lucky and we took one so is what it is they, they just batted and bowled really really well back to back fortresses breached by india and the west indies there's not much more i can say i'm just copying a lot of ptsd in today's episode and um who's this i thought that was shutman gill but that is not gill who this I'm, I'm sorry i'm just trying to notice who this guy is like not normally i can see every player and i'm like oh, i know who that is but who that? <laughs> Who that? Because um, obviously they had a lot of uh, substitutes in that series. Must uh, might be the top two greatest performances by one man against a top side in the world. Yeah, pants resilience that day, and then you've got Sharma's determination, and you know, on one side it was the bowling that did us, and then on the other side it was the batting from Rishabh that did us. So we've copped both ends of the stick: batting, bowling, doesn't matter. We just can't win at the Gabba anymore. <laughs> oh, I know. And it is like, as good as it is as a win for the Windies, it's a little bit concerning for the Aussies. Um, January 28th, the date will be remembered. We've got Stuart Broad. Oh, I don't know if I want to read this. Joking. Um, I'm absolutely enthralled with two test matches at the same time. England entertaining in India, Popey, and the West Indies rocking the Aussies at the Gabba. He, he, yeah, you know that man's loving it. Um, awesome, so fun. I like test matches going on at the same time around the world. Brings in energy. Yeah, agreed. And then AB, two nail batters at the... Two... I need to speak properly this morning. Gee whiz. Two nail biters. I said like Niall, Niall Horan from One Direction. Two nail biters at the same time. Yeah, and I think it does. Like it brings that just, you know, like you've got people watching one game, this game, people watching both games, and there's just like that energy around the world when there's test cricket in both parts of the world at the same time. You know, you go from one lunch break to to the dinner break in the other match, and it's like, I don't know, it is. It actually is kind of cool. It's like they're... Oh, I mean, it's not the same, but it's like a English Premier League, you know, the final day when they have all the matches on at the same time and you're kind of keeping, you know, across every game. It, I don't know. It kind of is fun. From one young superstar to an upcoming one, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, Sharma Joseph, like he's played two test matches. No one had a clue who the bloke was before the first and here he is. He's a superstar. And, like, he's going to get... I know he said something about not wanting to play T20 cricket as much, but he's going to get big offers, at least from the big Bash League teams. So, you know, that's a good start at least. At least, you know, you get a platform. Not so great results for the home side. No comment. No comment. Um, yeah, look... Uh, yeah, I know. That deep, deep Aussie inside of me is a little bit upset, but I'm just masking it with with, with, with happiness. <laughs> Sorry, Aussies. A fortress. They call it a fortress. Really? Both times on the receiving end, I feel for the <laughs> half no. <laughs> Oh, this is sad. I'm sorry, Josh. I don't mean to laugh at you, but look, he he is this guy. And I was watching the um the the the, the finish of the test match. Uh, you know, sitting here with my dad, just watching the the end of it, and um I was saying to him how like Josh Hazelwood is always in these positions where he either he just ruins the game. Now that sounds really harsh, but whether it's with bat or ball, usually bat. 
he's always at the end of the games. He's always the one on strike and he's always the one who gets out. There's been so many times that I can remember in white ball, red ball cricket where Hazelwood is in the middle. It's up to him to survive a few deliveries and he goes out. So yeah, look, I think the message is don't make it all the way to the end of the batting order, but yeah, that, that that delivery that knocked out his peg, I mean, holy moly, did the commentary go off. And did I go off? I was a little bit excited too. I'm not going to lie. I didn't realize what happened at first. I'm like, did he block the ball? That's a good block. Hold on. He stumps out of the ground. <laughs> no. And then they're running. And then it's like, all right, it's definitely over now. Two members. Welcome to Gabba Breach Academy. <laughs> the Gabba Breach Academy. I like it. That's a good, that's actually a good uh, group to start. Who will be next? Hopefully no one, to be honest. I don't know if I can take any more pain. Uh, does Australia really deserve to be number one in the world? We won the WTC final. <laughs> what more can we do? Uh, two, inc we, got, we got the man Higos. Uh, Higos from uh, TGC. Two incredible games of test cricket unfolding at the same time, but I think I speak for everyone when I say I'm looking forward to the 94 match 3.5 month season of the IPL in 2027. <laughs> oh boy. Um, 94 matches and four months of the year would be crazy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Australia hasn't toured South Africa since 2018, West Indies since 2015 and NZ since 2016. That, that is a long time, but we are going to tour New Zealand in like a month, so that's okay. Hasn't played a test against Bangladesh since 2017. Can you blame us? Zimbabwe since 2004. Again, can you blame us there? Cancelled test matches against Afghanistan multiple times. No comment. And the audacity of these people to talk about BCCI destroying cricket. Oh, Oh my God, uh, the, the problem with these test cricket psychopaths is that they get two good games in two years and the first thing they remember is IPR. <laughs> is he talking about Higos right here? Um, I think it was more, more just a joke, but I think it was more just to say how like test cricket is, is that format. Like everyone loves T20, white ball and you know big sixes big wickets quick games but when it's that five day four day test matches of just a battle left and right you know it's like a boxing match you know yeah it's especially when they're close like both of those ones that we just had it's it's the best but it, it that is that is a little surprising that we uh, oh actually hold on we haven't toured south africa since that long because of the ball tampering scandal. So that's probably an obvious one. The West Indies, that's disappointing. And then New Zealand, that's disappointing. But thankfully we are going there this season or in a month or two. Downfall of the Gabba started here. Damn it. Can't wait till we get you at the Gabba. That's what Tim Payne said. And he fucked us up essentially straight from there. Timothy, I like you, Tim people. If you watch this channel, you know I've been a fan of Timothy Payne. You know, he's a good bloke. You know, he, maybe he said some silly things, but he led that Australian team out of a dark period. And then he put us into another dark period. So, <laughs> oh no, no, it's all right, Tim. You did your best, mate. That's all good. Uh, the total matches was 216 test matches compared to the Aussies 528. Seven players of the West Indies team had an experience of under 10 test matches. Incredible. And to think how many of these guys were just playing their first ever test series for that matter. Kirk McKenzie, Hodge, Greaves, Sinclair, Joseph. Like, I think they had at least five to six to seven debutants in this series. Like, to win a game is so big. Like, actually, it's like, you know, just even put it in more terms. It's like UAE or the USA beating, you know, like, let's say the USA beating India in a T20 World Cup game in the World Cup this year. It's like, how that shouldn't be happening sort of thing. That's probably the best perspective I can put into it. But, you know, just, yo, what is going on here, Craig? You're flexing on Issa? What the hell is this? Mr. Rodney Hogg told us that they were pathetic and hopeless. <laughs> so that was our motivation. I want to ask him now, are these muscles big enough for you? We want to show the world that we're not pathetic. Yo, Isha, Isha, she's getting a good look at those big muscles. Hold on. 
<laughs> Bro, he just pulled out the guns on stage right in front of her and said, hey, you like, you like these. <laughs> Bro, is this top three cricket moment of all time? What's going on here? I, I mean, on my bingo card, I was never expecting Craig Braithwaite to get on stage and flex at the reporter, but here we are. And this... I don't know what's going on with West Indies player and Australian broadcasters. Like, I know Isha is from England, um, or I think she's from England, right? But, you know, we've had Chris Gale, we've had Craig Braithwaite, we've had uh, Marlon Samuels. They just love talking to Aussie broadcasters and making funny events. Um, if you know, you know. Not only him, but the whole team took it, personally, after his team was called pathetic and hopeless. And I took that personally. And as they should have, to be honest, like... They should have heard all that disrespect. They should take all that on board and use it as inner motivation because you know, sometimes when people are hating on you, it's like that is the best like kickstart motivation to just dig in and fight. Um, no jinxing. Come on. Pat Cummins after realizing what happened with the Aussie captain last time he lost at the Gabba. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. The man Pat, he's going to be done for a texting scandal soon and that'll be it. Oh, man. What did you do, Mitchell? Guys, never play against any injured player at the Gabba. Worst mistake of my life. Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't have broken his toe. Uh, Good to see this. Could be the future of the West Indies bowling now going forward. I'll always be available to play test cricket. No matter how much money is out there, rare to hear such statements in the era of lucrative T20s. It is a great thing to hear. I guess we'll just see what actually happens in 12 months because I tell you what, if he's offered lots of money to go play in the IPL, let's say, I have a feeling he might take it. (laughs) What do you guys reckon if he's offered, you know, $20,000 to play for his international team or, you know, $2 million to go play in the IPL? It kind of does make it tough. Um, Call an ambulance, but not for me. Sharma, bro, like he, he he looked like he would never play cricket for another two years after this. And then day five, he's doing a marathon around the stadium after taking the last wicket. So, yeah, anyways, was it a fake injury? Did he, did he make us all feel sorry for him to then destroy us? He did. And I'm not okay with that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, agree? We got Mickey Arthur. Where do I know that name? Oh, he was the uh, oh, the Pakistan coach, I think he was or something. Uh, test cricket gets so exciting to watch when you have bowl, uh, pitches which slightly favours the bowlers instead of just flat, lifeless pitches. I think he's talking about Pakistan pitches. As he knows, he used to coach them, I think. Mickey? Did he used to coach Pakistan? But that is 100% true. I'm going to give a big fat thumbs up there too, bang. Um, if you had to pick one... Oh, wow. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think I'm going with Pope's score just because I think the West Indies were before he then, you know, before Sharma took seventh far, the West Indies were in a decent position to compete for this win. Until Ollie Pope score, England were done. Like they were not going to do anything until Pope just dug in and made one of the better innings you'll ever see overseas. So I'm probably going to go Pope, but two efforts that'll never be forgotten. When you play for money and not your country, no context, surgery, seven for. (laughs) Oh, sorry, Hardik. Well, you know what? Maybe not fully untrue. You know, look, sometimes people just, you know, come on, Hardik. Sometimes you just got to pull through the injury, my mate. You got to pull through. Literally, what's happening? India fans celebrating West Indies win when they are on the verge of losing against England. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, it's it, hey, that's cricket for you. You're allowed to give it to the other team who's losing, and then a few hours later, when it's your team who loses, you just have to cop it, and that's that's cricket. Uh, most me test matches in India are so boring; it all ends in three days. Also me, when a team slightly challenges India and the game goes to four or five days. <laughs> yeah, it's like, damn you, Ollie Pope. I didn't have this in my plans. This was meant to be done in day two. <laughs> Basbol is really troubling us. Ugh. 
This is not something I wanted to hear. For the first time in 21 test matches in India, a visiting team scored 200 plus in both innings. The last time was Sri Lanka in 2017. They shouldn't have gotten 200 in either of the innings. I'm not going to lie. Like Even in that first innings, they were on the ropes and they just got let back into it slightly. And it wasn't poor bowling, just good batting, really. Especially their, um, their tail end as well would try and hang around. Another selfless knock by our skipper. Not to be. And that, I think that was everyone's reaction right here. Like, come on. Yeah, I know. They do. They needed something big from the skipper to stand up straight from the get-go. But Hartley. Hartley bowled well. I, yeah, I didn't expect it of him, but there he was. What has happened to this man? Give me freedom. Give me fire. Give me flat pitches. Oh, I will retire. <laughs> He says, hold on, when's the next game at Ahmedabad? I will be there. Besides this knock, the man has done nothing extraordinary. Ooh, I don't really think about taxes, but when I do, it's mostly about Gil's Gabba tax, which we as a country have been paying for years. That was an incredible knock, let's not lie though. But maybe it is time to have a chat about his Red Bull form. Is it? We know that 50 overs... He's arguably India's top three player. Uh, T20, he's a little bit slow. And then Test Cricket, he can't exactly stay around and dig in for a big, 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 big score. So maybe there is a topic to have, but I guess who 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 comes in? Safaraz? Like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> East Warren? Uh, Padada? Who comes in? You have to have someone. A Pajara back? Probably not. <laughs> Um, no proper approach. Indian batsmen fall attacking in the first innings, and then Indian batsmen fall defending, and it kind of was like that. They just played their usual game style that they were trying to do in the first innings, and then they felt that little tight squeeze from England and that little pressure building, and they're like, all right, we'll go back into it. Not our shell, but playing safe, and it cost them, and there was a few wickets there that were just genuine shit. I'm not going to name names from the Indian team, but there were a few dismissals in that second innings where you're just like, come on, that's not the shot to play there. Um, and even a shot from like, oh, this is probably unfair, but even Ashwin at the end, like skipping up the crease, it's like, Ashwin, no, no, you've worked so hard to hang around, just fucking keep defending. And then he skips up the crease and it's like, oh, Ravi, <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, literally, his ODI average. And then his test batting average, Harry Brook. And then you just switch him around, essentially is the same. Yeah, I know, that is a little bit weird. That reverse cup throw uh, by Stokes to get rid of Jadu on the run out, yeah. <sighs> I'll give credit where it's due. Well, 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 ooh, I, I don't know if I can do it. Well, uh, well played, uh, I can't say it. Well played, Ben Stokes. That's enough. Ugh, that's enough for me, I'm sorry. Ugh, I mean, yeah, he's a great fielder. He's athletic. This is not where I wanted this to happen. My predictions was that England would lose 5-0, they would get in a position to win, and they would choke a game, and Ben Stokes would be exposed as a fraud captain. But look, it's not the start I needed. We've got four more test matches to hopefully wrong the right, uh, right the wrongs. Yeah, that's it. Right the wrongs. Thank you. Why can't our newbies play spin? Indian fans watching Siraj Bumrah bat better than Gil and Shireyas. Yeah. Um, yeah, Shireyas Ayer is known for his play of spin, though, so it's a little bit confusing. Another historical comeback out of nowhere by England to win. And this guy, Tom Hartley, he looks 75. He's got a receding hairline of my uncle, but he can take wickets. And he bowled really well. And so did Pope. And so did Joe Root. And so did Rian Ahmed, to be honest. I thought Rian Ahmed, he, he won't get any credit from how he bowled, but I thought he, I thought he was good. I thought he was good. Um, oh, man. My coffee's cold. I forgot about it. No. <laughs> Why? Australia lose a test match and England win an away test against India on the same day. I know. It's, 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 it's pain. It is quite painful. And if you're an England fan watching this, which I don't think I have many England people that do watch my videos, but hey, this will be one of the very few days where I give my credit. I say, well done. 
Enjoy. This is your moment. Australia suck. You've beaten India away. It doesn't get, probably get much better than that for England at the moment. Although they still don't have the Ashes and they don't have the World Cup. But hey, who am I going to be the one to say that? Although they do have a T20 World Cup. But look, come on. It's not the same. <laughs> what a comeback. This is the beauty of Test Cricket. So bowled like shit. He got put for six in his first ball and then wins him the game with the ball in the second innings with Ollie Pope, who also had a shit first innings, backs it up with that in the second. So, yeah, you just there's not much you can do but take your hat off and give credit. Like, yeah, maybe India didn't bowl their, to their best, but the way Pope was playing, like, is ridiculous. I think you could have had prime Shane Warne and Murali bowling at him, and he still would have found his way to 100. Um, inside a year, our second loss at home. A rare home defeat. So there was... Oh, that... Bro, this is one of the more famous matches for me personally when Australia won... I think this was the first test match of the series when Stephen O'Keefe took uh, 12 wickets and then v England in Chennai in 2021. Australia in indoor last year and then obviously now the one in Hyderabad. So... Yeah, I know. That's I mean, things are happening. The walls are not falling, but just you, things are starting to get broken. Like the Gabba record or India's record now on home soil. Like, hey, records are starting to tumble, which is you know, probably a great thing for Test cricket. Just the more you know, unpredictability about the sport. You know, instead of just seeing India, Australia, they will win every single match, and then it's whoever works around that. Uh, three consecutive winless games and that two at home. Their last three tests at home. A loss against the Aussies, a draw against the Aussies, and now a loss. A streak of three winless games in India after 12 years. Records are falling everywhere and that's... Damn, that is a... Yeah, I mean, that's like a, a Gabba sort of stat right there. Row it being row it. Look, winning test matches at home is overrated. Yeah, I don't think he said that. <laughs> I think I know what's going on there. Um, he said he said and did it. He turned down IPL contract to save Test Cricket of England and now beat India in India. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He'll get my... Yeah, well done. Well done. All right. That's the last time I'm going to say well done, Ben Stokes. All right. I'd, I'd surely say that this is the greatest victory for me in captaincy. Well done. I've said it again. Don't make me say it once more, Ben. <laughs> the best touring side in Asia. England in test matches since 2018 in Asia. Whitewash Sri Lanka. Whitewash Sri Lanka. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Whitewash Sri Lanka twice. Whitewash Pakistan. First visiting team to beat India in Chennai. And then the first t visiting team to beat India in Hyderabad. God damn. It should have been Australia. Damn it. Anyways, well played. That's, I guess it's cool, just, you know. Like, I guess someone has to, you know, competitive. Uh, not just 100 plus, it was 190. India at home after taking a 100 plus lead. 70 wins, 35 drawn matches, and now one loss. Bro, how many stats did England beat? There are so many records that have happened in one day of test cricket. Good Lord. In a couple of hours, we felt you. <laughs> yeah. Who would have thought ICT fans celebrating the Windy's Gabba win was going to be the only win we would celebrate today? <laughs> hey, I feel it. Um, but hey, at least for the India fans, you guys get to celebrate the West Indies victory. Us Australian fans, we're not celebrating England's win. Like, that's just another loss for us. So, essentially, we've been given two losses in one day, which is quite heartbreaking. But hey, I, I am happy for the West Indies, man. Like there is no nation that I am more happy to lose against or not be upset about than the West Indies. And I think that goes for pretty much everyone that when the West Indies beat you, you're okay with it, to be honest. Like, yeah, that's all right. You know, we love them. Uh, Lee Bumrah and Siraj, we expected Jaiswal and Gill to bowl and take fivers. <laughs> I wanted Siraj and Bumrah to take the game to the fifth day. 20 to 30 runs, anything is possible. The lower order actually fought well. The men, Rowett, wanted them to take it to the fifth day. 
I think you might have uh, been a little bit late for that. It might have needed some actual batsmen at the crease to do that. But anyway, you know what was funny? Muhammad Siraj coming out to bat. First two balls, you know, a little bit of how you go and just try and push it away for a single. And then out of nowhere, I think it was Siraj's third or fourth ball that he faced. He tried to skip the crease and send it into orbit. Missed it, nicked it. Next ball, he skips the crease and tries to do the same thing. I'm like, Siraj... I, I know you don't want to bat, but this is crazy. Like, what are you doing? Uh, are you sure, Rowett? Numbers are overrated. Don't play for milestones. Plenty of almost milestones. And then you do play for the milestone. Yeah, at least you didn't get 200, right? <laughs> uh, just, I wonder who the last player to get a 200 in India was. That's a cool stat that I want to know now. Um, just tells you why test cricket is the best format in the world. Yep. Yep, it's got to be. And I know some people, look, have grown up in the, the white ball era, but just there's just something special about that red ball when there's two matches going on. It's just an absolute chest match, uh, chest, chess match. You know, it's, it's just those little moves every, left and right. Like if you're not making the right move, you, you get done. <laughs> uh, wish we had these two. Yeah, I mean, man, they would be important. Rishab instead of Shrika Barat would be a big upgrade. And then Coley in for, what, I guess Gil or Jaiswell at this point. But another massive upgrade. Simple, how to get these batsmen out. Short balls with extreme pace. Outswinger, out, outswinger outside the fourth stump so he nicks it. That was a tongue twister. In swinger at stumps may trap him LB. And then, oh, Shutman Tendulka just bowl. Damn it! I mean, when there, it seems like there's when there's no Sara in the crowd, he doesn't he doesn't go that well. Does anyone notice that? Just a thought, just a thought. Maybe Sachin needs to get down there and uh, Sara and just say, "Hey, sit there and watch Shutman bat, would you?" Also, South Africa defeated Oz as well. Um, oh, in the in the woman's side of it, an incredible day for sports. Yannick Sinner comes back from two uh, love down. Uh, two sets down to win the Australian Open, which I did end up watching that final last night. But man, what an incredible comeback that was in a great five-setter. Even if you're not a tennis fan, I, I recommend uh, checking out the highlights and whatnot. England win by 28. The Windies beat Aussies by eight runs. This is why sport is a way of life. This is why sport is life. Um... Yeah, and that's why I, yeah, just I love watching so much sport, whether it's, you know, Australian football, cricket, tennis, you know, Olympic sports, you know, I, I, any sport that's on, I watch it, except for like golf. I'm I just, I'm not a big golf fan. It's too boring, but <laughs> anyways, that's, yeah. Well, baseball's okay, I suppose. I do love basketball as well. Batting or bowling? Tell us honestly, who is responsible for India's defeat? I think Ollie Pope is, um, and Hartley. I mean, look, you know, like, yes, there were some average batting performances that didn't go on, needed some more runs, but look, I just think the way England attacked it, Pope batted them into an incredible spot, which was a one in, one in a lifetime innings, and then Hartley bowled like he was prime Todd Murphy. So it just happens, doesn't it? Like sometimes the other team will just they just get on top of you and the momentum doesn't stop. Jeez, that sounds really weird. I'll edit that out. Um, Virat as test captain, losing a test at home. Virat, two in eight years. Hitman, two in the last 12 months. Ooh, yikes. Um, that's not a great stat to have. Will England's basketball approach again work in the next four? Let's hope not. Uh, there is a serious concern about the mentality of the Indian batsman. That's going to be the key takeaway from this. Uh, Jaiswal, who smacked every bowler furiously, suddenly went into a shell and got out. That's where England stand out in baseball. It's about a mindset, not the technique. Yeah, I mean, true. I think it's just a bit of both. But, like, I think as well, because India, in that second innings, they went into survival mode, and they're like, we're going to bat India. We're going to bat India. We're going to bat England out of this match by just soaking up a lot of time, a lot of pressure, sort of thing here and they they went completely away from their first innings strategy strategy if i can speak um so yeah it's just sticking to that same game game plan and, and you know having row it you know 
tell the boys and lock that in and, and keep enforcing that play the natural way forget what they're doing play our natural way our same attacking brand of cricket we're the home team we're the team who is hunting not the hunted and they ended up being hunted so yeah it's just that momentum swing in the end that kind of did them in great performance in the first test match from Jadu doubtful what Jadu doubtful for the second test match with a fucking hamstring oh brother no no so, who, so they're going to have to play Kuldeep Yadav, which there's nothing wrong with that, but you, you lose your best all-rounder. Oh, man, this could get dangerous. I mean, what? So Axar, Ashwin, they're going to have to bat probably a little bit more unless they bring in another batsman, but probably not. We expect that the next pitch will just spin. So, oh, man. Hold on, we've got uh, we've got a, an England guy explaining what happened. All right, let's see what he's got to say. He's what we learned from day four at the Test match. England's greatest ever. All right, lad. The first ball will never die, and build Tom Hartley a statue. And why? Because there is no amount of first-class stats. There is no amount of sitting on the SPN cricket info and trying to work out every. That's me. Bit of knowledge about a single cricketer that will tell you how big a man's cojones are if he gets hit for six first ball in test match cricket and then goes on to take seven wickets in the second innings and win England the game. Yeah, fair it's play. Ball environment. It allows players to go out there and express themselves and do what they want to do. Just look at that West Indies side who turned over Australia today. All right. We're out there just having fun, doing the right things and playing cricket fantastically. What I would have given for this to have filtered down to club cricket when I was 12 years old and to not have my captain telling me that I have to play with a high elbow and not hit the ball in the air. No, go out there, manners, and have some fun. And now I'm the league. <laughs> He's leaving. <laughs> One sec, I've got to take this bit seriously. And now I'm the UK's Premier Cricket Journalist. Oh, really? I finally stand there and feel vindicated for being daft and just enjoying cricket rather than just worrying about things going wrong because that's an English disposition and it has been for years. I think my heroes like Atherton and the same probably had that drilled into them. Since yeah, well true. Old. But get ready for the next test match in Bizag to be on the biggest graveyard you've ever seen in your life. I imagine there are 20,000 JCBs on their way out to just dig through it and 10,000 people with pitchforks to... <laughs> pitchforks. They, they reckon they're getting the pitchforks out, just start smashing the crap out of it. Look, probably. Um, also, that was a... Uh, did you need to mention Australia losing in there? Like, could we not just get away from one sort of thing there? But that's well said. Um... There's a few things actually that I wanted to go back to. Hold on, where is it? Um, yeah, about like expressing like have some fun. We actually like, I'm sure this went for everyone who probably played, you know, junior cricket growing up and, and just cricket. But like he mentioned how his coach and his captain when he played under 12s was told to keep a high elbow, do this, do that, instead of just going out there as a kid and having fun to smack the fuck out of the ball, which I, I wish that was instilled in like me as a child as well playing cricket because it was always if you go out or if you bowl bad you're a terrible player yeah you're just doing shit you're ruining the team and it's like i'm 13 years old i shouldn't be thinking that i should just be happy to play cricket it's true and that's that is why actually you know that basball style does does have its advantages Dravin and rowett could be having a long chat with the curators of the pitch and you know what will happen next oh yeah we know what will happen next baby um, exclusive pictures of the of the preparation. <laughs> oh man, it's going to be turn. Um, and if it's not, like, then I think India actually miss a trick. Like, you know what? India have got pride on the line now. Like, they they, they are one nil down in a home test series. If they lose the next test match and they're two nil down, people will will burn down one of the stadiums. I have no doubt about it. So, like. They need to win the next match. Forget, forget the the morals of cricket. It's time to it's time to start tampering. <laughs> it's time to it's time to make that pitch as turn friendly as possible. Make it an absolute shit show. But Ollie Pope seems to play spin quite well, so maybe you don't want to work it into England's favour. So I don't know. Maybe the best advantage of of making a pitch would be making it quite. I was going to say seem friendly, but I don't think that's a real chance. I mean, 
yeah, I think I think India's best chance is still just quite a general sort of pitch that they just need to outplay and make big runs. But you know, the way England played, like it's going to be hard, isn't it? Uh, this this is why it's not working. Changed my game. Kevin Peterson said Rahul Dravid is somebody who changed my game. I want him to go and spend time with Shukman and do the same stuff. If Gil rotates the strike and learns that from Dravid, the world is his. And let's talk about how sexy this RCB um, kit was. I think this is the first year, but yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Just imagine being an ICT fan. Fortunately, the bad days are over. It's time for even worse days. Bottling a home test after 190 run lead. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a fair point. That, like, you know, India, they've always been that team who is, you know, near the top in, at least in the last decade, decade and a half. But they've just had a few of these chances now, which would piss you off as a fan, I could only imagine. So, yeah, you, yeah. And obviously I'm supporting India against England, obviously. And I want to see the boys fire up, like as a, an Indian fan in this series, I want to see the boys absolutely fired up for that second test match. I don't want to see any of them posting social media shit. I want them to be nothing but focused on the test match and what they need to do to win. Forget forget anything. There's pride on the line now. You're 1-0 down against England at home. You can't lose another match. Like You actually can't lose another test match to England at home. Otherwise, we will be upset. Uh, Eng India slipped down further. How the hell are we still on top? Bro, I thought there's no chance that we would be on top. Oh, it's because we've played so many more games, I see. Uh, that would be why. So we've won six, lost three, drew one. We've also got minus 10 penalties. So I don't think there's a big chance that Australia defends their WTC title at all. I, th I don't think it's going to happen. South Africa, one from one, which is pretty good. The Kiwis, the same. India, they're not looking good either. I think India and Australia, they will not be a part of the final. Pakistan, they're fucked. West Indies, that's a good win. England, three and two. So they've got minus 19. So probably not for them either. I mean, at the end of the day, the WTC final might just end up being South Africa v the Kiwis, which would actually be quite cool. Imagine that in England, you know, those tall quicks on each side, Jansen, Nordiki, Rabada v Southie, Bolt, you know, Kyle Jameson, I'm trying to think of their other bowlers, Matt Henry, Ferguson, like those sorts. It'd actually make for a pretty good contest, but we've still got, what, another year and a bit to go until those results are in. So um, there's big test series coming up, New Zealand v Australia in New Zealand. So big series that. Spot on. Can we talk about how perfect this logo is? Yeah, this is my favorite. I think this is everyone's favorite cricketing logo in the world. Um, and it's just so vintage. It's so basic, but so beautiful. And it literally represents where they play cricket and what part of the world they are coming from. And uh, yeah, it actually is. It actually is one of the more beautiful logos. They literally never have to change this. Like they never have to revamp it. They've had vintage, you know, they've had older versions of this, which look just as good. So they've also got the best merch of all time. We know that probably the best kits of all time, arguably. So they know what they're doing when it comes to colors, logos, um, Trees. Is that a palm tree? Would you say that's a palm tree? I'm not exactly knowing of my trees. And we've got our last one of the video. Please, which one is more likely to happen in 2024? England win a test series in India. Please don't let that happen. If that happens, I will be disgusted. Um, one, just one test match was good enough for England. India ending their ICC drought since 2013. Possibly RCB ending their IPL drought or the West Indies winning their third T20 World Cup title. I'm going to rank these in most likeliness of happening. So I'm going to put... Oh, gee whiz. I'm, I'm going to put India ending their ICC drought at the top. I think that's the most likely of happening. I'm then going to put England winning the Test Series in India. As much as I don't want to have that there... They're 1-0 up, so it's probably a bit unfair if I didn't. Third, I'm going to say... 
RCB and their drought. And then in the last position, I'm going to say the West Indies win their third T20 title. Like they're going to have a pretty full strength team, but I just don't think the culture's there. You know, I just don't think they're, they're going to be that good in T20 cricket when half of their players don't even play for international team except for like one or two games a year. So I just don't think the culture will be there, but they're going to have a good team. I just, yeah, I think there'll be other sides that are better. But hey, that will cap us off. Firstly, I hope we all enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. Comment down below. Algorithm stuff. YouTube stuff. I hope we all enjoyed. If you want to join the Discord, comment down below. DM me at any of those social medias in the bottom corner, and I will get you in here. I hope we all enjoyed, and I'll see everyone in the next one.